Good evening, folks. It's Al Nygren again with our third interview for the New Jersey International Film Festival. Remember, we have screenings going on from June 1st through the 17th on weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. in Voorhees Hall, room 105 at Rutgers University, at 71 Hamilton Street in New Brunswick, New Jersey. We have a ton of films, actually 27 of them. They're in competition for best of prizes. And we have one of the film directors here. The name of his film is called A Glow, and it's a documentary, a short documentary film about an artist who draws with fire. And so I'd like to introduce you to this wonderful person. His name is Howard Libov. Hello. And he's also a faculty member, professor of cinema studies or cinema? Film, film production. At yeah. Fairleigh Dickinson University. Right, on the Madison campus. Great. Well, welcome, Howard. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about this great film. Well, a glow, uh, as you say, documents an artist who paints with fire, but my interest was in uh, adding to a series about artists um, because I wanted to sort of demystify them. Mm. Uh, we tend to see artists as elitists, as leading lives different than us. Mm. I always think of uh, the song that says, uh, you know, money for nothing and your chicks for free. <laughs> um, but in fact, uh, many of the same pressures that all of us deal with, you know, marriage, raising a kid, uh, earning a living, are encountered by artists too, and this experience goes into making their art. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do a series about contemporary American artists who are recognized, who are successful in their field, but who are not celebrities and therefore have to work. They have to generate work and sales in order to survive. Mm -hmm. So how did you decide on Paul Janowski? Well, I had done one previous, and I was looking for my second. Paul is someone I've known for a long time, and as I've said with him in the room, uh, I know, I've know i known him for a long time without ever thinking that he would be a candidate for the series. Hmm. Um, his previous art um, didn't interest me, hmm. and it didn't even provoke me to think, oh, he might one day be a candidate. It was a geometric uh, printmaking. Hmm. And, um, at one point, he started burning images, and uh, I started going to his exhibit as a friend. And I noticed this strange thing going on, which is that these images, which were very abstract to begin with, he had very little control of his tools, hmm. started to become more representational, hmm. and his intent became more clear. Hmm. And then I was fascinated by the medium. And he got to the point where he's at now, where he can draw as realistic or unrealistic as he chooses to. Mm -hmm. um, and people will sometimes come up to him and go, are you painting, you know, are you burning images with fire over a photo? Mm. You know, no, I'm not. Yeah, because that's what I hand. thought too when I first saw some of the images and I wondered, is he a photographer or right. is he actual artist who uses, you know, a, a, a pen, or I'm not even sure what he uses beside a blow, he does use a blow well, he torch. He uses, right? I think, four blow torches, mm -hmm. he could correct me. Uh, the big one is Big Bertha, it's just a plumber's blow torch, <laughs> and the small one is a jeweler's blow torch, right. and there's a couple others in between, he mm -hmm. uses them all. And he, at this, was this, where he was becoming famous at the same time as you were making this uh, film? You know, one of the things of my series is that uh, instead of going up, let's say, for a weekend and doing a profile, which mm -hmm. I should do, be much easier. Uh, I spend two or three years with these people, and I go up once a month or once every two months. And the whole idea is to try and find what's enduring in their lives, right. what keeps happening, and where their careers go. Uh, and so during this time, just because we were spending a lot of time with them, mm -hmm. uh, he got representation in New York. Um, he um, saw his work chosen for the set of a feature film, yeah. uh, and his divorce became final. So, you know, all of these things were happening to him during the course of the film. Yeah, it's all, when you get the accolades, something always horrible happens. And He's very much dealing with, um, you know, real life, and that, yeah. I think, ultimately is where the film goes, and that's really what we're interested in. The art is interesting, but it's really about what's percolating mm -hmm. beneath it, and even creating the art. So tell us, tell, tell our viewers a little bit more about what they're going to see when they come to see a glow. Well, you will uh, eventually get to see Paul burning an image, which we waited a while to see, too. I kept saying, you know, when are we going to see burning an image? We kept going up and seeing sketching and drawing. But really, as I say, the film is about what makes an artist tick, mm -hmm. how they live, where they get the ideas for their work that sell. These are not hobbyists. That's important to yeah. point out. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, how his, what's happening in his personal life is reflected 
in his very unique art. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the series. What is it called? And the series is called Under the Radar, uh, and it came about for two reasons. Number one, I have been making fiction feature films uh, and teaching, and it's very hard to make fiction feature films. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got a little tired of just knocking my head against the wall. <laughs> and uh, decided I wanted to get into uh, f documentary filmmaking, mm -hmm. back into documentary filmmaking. But I didn't want to do issue movies. Um, I love issue movies, I go to them, but other people can do them better than I me. think you mask it. I yeah. still think your film is an issue film, but it's under the, the veil of, you know, focusing on this artist. But like you said, it's really about the artist's life. So the issues being regular life and yeah. real life. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to do films about big issues, let's right. put it that way. Um, so I wanted to do something that was visual, and I don't mean just because the artist is a fine artist, but mm -hmm. something that I could use cinema techniques and hopefully move the audience while doing it. Well, I think it's a, 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 it's a short film. It's about a half an hour right. length. Length, and it's part of a series of films that we'll be showing that deal with art and artists. And we'll be doing that on Sunday, June 10th in Voorhees Hall, room 105, in our state-of-the-art facility. Your film is going to look wonderful I'll on our there. big screen, high-definition projection. And that's the thing. Howard will be there, and he's <laughs> going to introduce his film. He's also going to be sticking around to do a Q&A afterwards. So you can, as an audience, you can hobnob with our filmmakers. And there's local filmmakers that will be there. We have filmmakers coming from far away as well. And that's the beauty of our film festival is that um, nice filmmakers like you are able to share their art with our community. I look forward to it. Yeah, so folks, if you want to come and see these great films, we'll be doing one, two, three, four, five, six films for the low price of $10 general admission. We'll also be giving out free food before the film begins, thanks to Mayo's Vegetarian Restaurant from New Brunswick. And that'll start at 7 o'clock on Sunday, June 10th, and Voorhees 105. So please come and join us. More information is available at njfilmfest.com, or you can call us at 732-932-8482. Thanks so much for joining us, Howard. Thank you, Al. Thank I you. appreciate it.